Here it comes again. Or was it? Anyway, happy Friday the 13th. Let's do this. I got my shirt on to mark the occasion. So yeah, you didn't think I'd you know, end this Friday the 13th without doing anything to mark the occasion. So here we go. Here's a ranking of the films. I decided to add one that is, well, not really considered part of the franchise, but, but it's a fan film, but a nicely done fan film in this to change things up a little, because you know, I don't want to just keep re-ranking like, all the 12 installments that we got in the franchise. You know, and it's Friday the 13th, why not put the number 13 in there? So here we go. Here are top, thir top 13 Friday the 13th movies. All based on my opinion, okay, so no one has to agree with it. But here are my top 13, so let's go. And number 13 it is Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. This one is just... You know, Jason physically is only in two acts, the opening and the finale. For the rest of the film, he's jumping from body to body because he gets blown up at the beginning. Anyway, yeah, this, I feel, is not a great start to New Line owning the rights to Jason. Next, at number 12 is Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Yes. So, in this one, they thought, let's change things up and take Jason out of Crystal Lake to New York. And basically, they origin the original vision for it were for Jason to have more of a rampage in New York and have a big finale uh, on the Statue of Liberty. But because of budget reasons, they had to reduce 90% of the film on, a la on, the la on the SSS Lazarus. And yeah, Jason basically doing a lot of his kills on there and having like the last 20 minutes of him in New York, which I thought was a bit crap and just wasn't wasn't what I was thinking at all. You know, the trailer too was misleading and you know, Kane Hodder though, his performance was great, but the film, I, you know, I wish I could have said more about the film being like that. Anyway, number 11 is Jason X. Do I really need to spell this one out? The 10th installment in the Friday film, so hence the X, but um, yeah, taking him into space, Come on, it didn't work with Hellraiser. It didn't work with Leprechaun. What made them think it was going to work with Jason? Uh, I thought Kate Hodder was great though, but then there was the big cyborg Jason that looked like the villain out of Power Rangers. Just not a great one. Okay, top 10 now. So at number 10 it is Friday the 13th, part 7, The New Blood. This one I thought was okay. Um, started to go down in quality from there. Kane Hodder was great as Jason. This was his first outing as Jason. So, you know, I feel Kane Hodder was the right guy for the job. But for the writing, yeah, just not as good. Jason versus Carrie, basically, when our main protagonist has telekinetic powers. Yeah. Anyway, well, well yeah, I did like the, the decaying look on Jason, though. That did look cool. So yeah, number nine is Jace, Freddy vs. Jason. So, after ten years of them teasing it at the end of Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday, they, you know, finally gave fans what they were asking for, Freddy vs. Jason. Now, I did actually like this one. I thought it was a fun ride. I enjoy every moment of it, you know. You know, over time, I've just learned to not take this film seriously and just enjoy it with the slapstick and the witty kills. You know, I do wish Kane Hodder would have been back to play the role of Jason, but Ken Kersinger was just, uh, was okay. Ironically, Kane Hodder threw him into a mirror in part eight. Yeah, that's a fact. So number eight is one that I've not included before. Uh, this one it is Never Hike Alone. Uh, this is a fan film 
that's about 50 minutes to an hour long. You can actually find it on YouTube. I'll see if I can link it down below in the description. But in this, a guy hiking alone, vlogging at Crystal Lake, soon comes into contact with the machete master himself, Jason. And this was actually a surprisingly good you know, fan film and got a lot of good stuff going for it. Even got a Blu-ray release. You know, so never hike alone. Check that one out. It is a great one. I won't give too much away about it, but do check it out. And it's at number eight because it was a well-made fan film, but to me, <clears throat> to me, there's just the other favourites on here. So coming in at number nine is Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning. So, <clears throat> if Jason still haunts you, you're not alone. In this, I thought it was good. In fact, if anything, I think of this as a slasher film that's paying homage to Friday the 13th because Jason isn't the killer. He exists in the mind of Tommy Jarvis. Part 4, 5 and 6 I like to call the Tommy Jarvis trilogy because it features him in it as the main protagonist. In this, it was an imposter Jason, but still, he did a great job playing the imposter Jason, which was the local paramedic Roy Burns who's out on a revenge mission for his son, who we didn't know was his son at the beginning, and yeah, check that out. So, coming in at number six, it is Friday the 13th, the 1980 original. I know what you're thinking, why is this not in the top five? Well, this one, it didn't feature, feature Jason as the killer, it featured his mother, Pamela Voorhees, uh, but still, this is a great classic. It's a, uh, you know, was basically just meant to be a revenge thriller, but, hey, this worked. It worked. You know, it was a good one. But I feel like the sequels and some of the other installments have just overtook it over time. But still is a great one. Okay, so, number five is Friday the 13th, 2009 Remake. This one was surprisingly good. It had elements of the first four plots put together. And yeah, it was fairly good. I thought Derek Mears was great as Jason. Even the opening acts, the first 20 minutes, and when it gets to that mark, I'm like, that was only just the opening act. Still, great remake. And I like how it how it acknowledges the previous franchise and stuff. Great one. Great remake. At number four, it is Friday the 13th Part 2. Yes, Jason making his killer debut. Only this, he didn't have the hockey mask on. He had the potato sack on his head, looking like the killer from the town that dreaded sundown, the Phantom. Uh, you know, not really explaining how Jason's alive and a grown man, or how he got to Alice, uh, what have you, but uh, still, it's a good film, good kills, and, you know, just Jason, you know, making his debut in the slasher genre. At number three, it is Friday the 13th, part three. This one, of course, is where Jason gets his iconic hockey mask. And, you know, ever since then, that look has stuck. And, you know, 3D effects in there. Probably good for its time, but crap now. But still, it's a good sequel and I enjoy the music. Even that soundtrack as well. And at number two, it is Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter which we all know wasn't the final chapter, but still, it was a good one. Taking off directly after part three ended, you know, Jason going back on his kills, bringing in Tommy Jarvis, played by Corey Feltman in this one. He was just, you know, badass and just a well good killer. You know, this is one of the best ones as well, I think. You know, in fact, it is considered one of the best ones, but... It doesn't top my number one pick, which still remains Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. To me, this is the best one. To me, this is the one where they thought, you know what, let's have some fun with this one. Let's not take it seriously. Let's just have a wild ride and have a killer soundtrack, which they do, and I loved it. I love the soundtrack from Alice Cooper. I love Jason in this. The first time we are introduced to Undead Jason, when he gets jolted back to life at the beginning with the lightning rod, well, with the rod that works as a conductor for the lightning when Tommy wants to destroy his body, which was a dumb decision. But still, part six is my favorite one still. And yeah, 
Pro the 13 past 6 Jason lifts. So, there you have it. My top 13 Friday the 13th films all ranked up. Yeah, one isn't really part of the original franchise as a fan film, but still I thought it was good enough to be in this list and like I say, I wanted to change things up a bit, you know, instead of just re-ranking the regular 12. So, yeah, um, how would you rank these? Tell me down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, share with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell. Um, all my social media links are down below in the description. So, until next time, happy Friday the 13th, and don't have nightmares.